What's an 0352, you ask? Well, today we're going to find out. So we got Lance Corporal Elder here uh, from 1st Battalion, 8th Marines. I appreciate you taking the time to come over here and, and sit down and, you know, shoot Ooh. with me a little bit here and like kind of maybe be able to give people some insight into what it's like being an O352, which for those of you that don't know what an O352 is, it's an anti-tank missile man or also known as a tow gunner or a jav gunner. Um, and I want to, I want people to basically have a better understanding of what it's like to be a tow gunner in today's Marine Corps in the infantry. Uh, and what better way to find this kind of stuff out than to talk to somebody who's actually doing the job right now um, actively and you know that's probably you got to provide the best perspective that we could get so um lance corporal elder what is your what's your first name first name donovan sir first name donovan yep. okay uh where are you from first i'm off? from little toledo ohio Toledo, uh, right under the michigan border yep right okay. by Lake gary i had a few friends that are from ohio that i served with that were also 52s i was a 52 so this is like oh, right. uh you know very personal to me, you know. I have a I have a personal stake in this. Um, oh, I promise, you, there's no better job. You're, right, now you're you're in a, a combined anti armor team, right? Yes, sir. Uh, known as Cat, uh, Cat Platoon, Cat Section. Um, we roll usually mounted in JLTVs, the yeah. uh, the tactical vehicles. But just recently, our platoon commander, Lieutenant Draymond, yeah. has come up with kind of a new concept, which is the Cat Light concept. Where it's the UTVs, like the little Polaris Razors, the uh, yeah, they're, they're like, like a dune buggy almost. Yeah, it's kind of like a like a golf cart, but like military. Yep, souped up golf cart on yeah. steroids, basically. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we just roll around, and you know, we'll we'll drive around on little unimproved dirt trails to get further, faster, and yeah. uh, we'll hop out, and we can bring our anti armor capabilities on foot. Yes, yeah. and that's. That's really useful for like tank hunter killer teams yep. and things like that because you can get in really quickly. You don't have as much of a footprint, and then you can take a jab shot or whatever and bounce out real quick before you know whatever enemy is able to detect your presence there. Or if you're like hunting tanks exactly. or hunting armored vehicles, you could park in defilade or something like that, run up on a, a ridge line with you, your a gunner fire off a uh, javelin and then bounce back to the G the jail or the uh, UTV UTV yep. and then just bounce out real quick 100% no uh increases the survivability a ton too because yeah. it's a new age of warfare i mean anyone can throw up a $100 amazon drone and you can pick up a thermal signature and uh rolling with heavy guns is a capability you cannot match yeah but it's mounted on a jail tv big metal truck loud yeah. uh sound signature too yeah so when you're dismounted you know you kind of keep a low profile and you're a lot more uh versatile or more yeah versatile for sure especially because like if you're firing a tow missile you got to stay there until the tow missile impacts the target you yep. can't you can't move the vehicle Direct whereas a jab side. gunner can just fire a jab off and then dip out and they don't have to sit there and watch it's fire and forget for a reason you know so exactly like that's that's huge um and that definitely the signature aspect like you're not you, you don't have as big of a footprint so if they got drones flying around overhead, maybe you can like drive into some small little nook somewhere and throw some some foliage on it real quick yep. before you're bouncing out, and then you take your shot and then get back to the vehicle and bounce out on your UTV. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's super. That's super cool, man. It's it's really cool being able to see like the improvements and like the modernization of uh, Cat specifically, just because. I mean, I was in CAT for a long time. We didn't even have JLTVs back when, when I was in CAT. We just had Humvees because yeah, they, Humvees, yeah. yeah, we just didn't have, well, I was in 3rd Marine Division too, so we weren't like rotating in and out of CENTCOM. We were just doing UDPs to Okinawa. Right. So uh, we didn't really have as much money or funding or like the good equipment necessarily because they knew we weren't going to actually go to theater, you know, yeah. whereas like some of the West Coast units were getting or it still had like M wraps and some of them still had uh Matt V's and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they had different, you know, options as far as that's concerned. But um in any case, so uh when when did you go through uh infantry training battalion? I went through ITB the winter of last year. Uh it was January through March. Winter of last year. How was that? Oh, it was cold, sir. It was cold. It was cold. Um, what was the temperature like? 
I think the coldest it got, one morning we woke up on the full auto M27 range and I think it was about seven degrees. Seven degrees. Yeah. That's pretty damn chilly, especially I, when you I, got you, the humidity of, of Camp Lejeune. Yeah, you, you know it's cold when they give the infantry tents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you, usually you only got your bivy sack. That's right. I'm still spoiled. Like, I'm not, well, I'm not spoiled. I'm still in that mindset, so even if I get given a tent sometimes, I don't break it out because I don't want to have to spend the time putting it together, so I'll just sleep my bivy sack, right. and there'll be a bunch of tents set up, but like I don't I don't feel like putting the time into it. But No, you uh, you spend enough time in the field, you start to get, uh, get a little bougie with it. I just got a yeah. uh, hammock. Oh, there got you go. Got a little tree hammock. Oh, yeah, I see a lot of guys breaking out the hammocks, especially if you got like some good tree line around you. Game changer. You know? yeah. I mean, like the funny thing about hammocks is we were using those in Vietnam, and it was actually a... Uh, an effective means of staying out of uh, out of like getting bit from bugs and snakes and stuff like that. So like a lot of these Vietnam vets would would hang tar or hang uh, hammocks up, and actually they got taught that stuff from the uh, the local Vietnamese troops, our partner forces over there at the time, um, to do that because otherwise you might you might risk getting bit by a snake if you're on the ground or getting bit by bugs and things of that nature. So right. it's kind of like an unconventional thing to do, and also you're not trying to be like covered in a line when you're in the field. Uh, to make yourself like an easy target for for Kaz or not for Kaz but for uh, well yeah for Kaz, um, you know or drone technology IDF, nowadays yeah. yeah IDF things of that nature uh, and just being kind of spread out and like bivouacked in a way that's a little unconventional is useful for yep. sure. Um, so you went through ITB in in the winter time. Uh, how long was ITB when you went through it? Uh, it was eight weeks. The first four weeks were the O three XX portion where. You're essentially a rifleman. You're learning the basics of the Marine Corps, rifle team, rifle squad. Okay. Um, and then the last four weeks after they do the split, um, the 0331s, the 0352s, they divide into their respective MOS. Yeah. And you dive in depth into your specialty, your job. Now, so it was still eight weeks at the time when you went through? Yep. Yeah. Okay. The, new, the new one, IMC, I think is 13 weeks or something. It's a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was eight weeks when uh, when we were going through as well. I know they've they've increased the the amount of time, the amount of training that they're getting down there, and it's from what I understand, it's improved. Um, there's a lot more expected, a lot more marksmanship, heavy mm-hmm. training type stuff. But um, I've heard I've heard both good and bad things. Um, yeah, because the longer course, even though you might be a designated uh, rifleman or mortarman. You have your specific MOS. You still touch all of the different weapon systems. Okay. So they know a little bit about everything. Granted, they can't dive in as deep to their MOS, but I mean, once you get to the fleet, anyways, you get trained up. So yeah, they they touch a lot of com equipment. Um, they do. I think they do the UAS too. They get exposed oh. to a lot of the new Marine Corps capabilities that I had to wait to get to the fleet to do. That's good. That's good. I mean, getting some familiarization with stuff uh, while you're in infantry train battalion is. I mean, it's beneficial. Even if you're not becoming like a subject matter expert, at least you're getting some hands-on time with it. So that way you kind of have an, like an idea of what you're going to be coming into when you yep. get, get to the fleet. So, um, okay, so you did the four weeks in the regular, like the 0311 package piece yep. in the beginning. And then Everybody does you guys that. split at the four-week mark to go to your like specialized MOS, whether it be 0331, 0352. They used to have the 0351. 0351s at one point mm-hmm. do they have uh they still have like a security forces split off or do they stay with the 11s the whole time yeah there's so, a uh there's a fast in itb no they they do the uh 11s training the whole time they're, they're designated 03 okay yeah yeah okay all right well so anyway you graduated itb when march 9th march 9th of yep. 2020 2022 two yep 2022 hopped on a bus the same day and got to good old 18 yeah and you you went you were East Coast for for recruit training and for that everything yes okay sir. yep all right yeah I actually heard stories of people going to recruit training on one coast and going to infantry training battalion on the other coast I don't know how frequent that happens I feel like that's probably uh, relatively yeah there's there's a couple uh, West Coast Marines in our platoon yeah, really a couple couple Cali guys okay yep okay all right so you are what's your what's your current billet right now. Formerly a VC in the JLTV's vehicle commander. Okay. Um, now in Cat Light, the dismounted section, I'm a javelin gunner. Okay. And what is it? What's it? What is a vehicle commander? I know what a vehicle commander is, but for people that don't know, what do you think? What is a vehicle commander? It is essentially a team leader. Um, okay. You're in charge of the equipment, the dudes in that vehicle. Um, usually four to five dudes in the vehicle. Okay. Um, you are essentially communicating with all of the other vehicle commanders via comms in the vehicle. Um, 
almost kind of battle tracking yeah. where these vehicles are. Would uh, you say it's kind of like a fire team, but just inside of a vehicle, basically? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's, yeah. See, and that, now, you're in, J, you're using JLTV specifically. You guys don't use Humvees anymore at all? We have the Humvees, but no, we, we use the JLTVs. When you were a, a vehicle commander, were you guys just heavy guns or were you in like the ant? Did you have like a saber truck or anything yep. like that? Uh, usually one section of a cap platoon is four vehicles. Okay. Uh, in the sequence of 50 cal in the front, yeah. Mark 19, a saber truck, and then another 50 cal in the back. Okay. Why do you think they have the 50 cal in the front? Um, it's the lead Vic, mostly because you don't have such a large uh, obstruction in your way. Yeah. The 50 cal has some of the most range of our weapon systems, too. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to put the Mark or Saber in the front because it's one of our most valuable assets. Is it 6,600, or sorry, 6,767 yards is the max? Meters. Yep. Meters? 7,400. Yeah, yards. I always mix it up with meters and yards, but yeah, that's still like, you know. It's yeah, a long no, distance. With yeah. slap to your rounds, you're touching out to a couple thousand meters. Yeah, yeah, and for you sure. Can get out there. And you got one in the back, in the rear too, right? A yep. 50 in the front, 50 in the rear? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then Mark 19 and Sabre. But yeah, yeah you're, you're always going to uh, try and protect the Sabre Vic mostly. Uh, yeah. You also have a Mark 19, you have two HE assets, and then we'll throw Maws and we could throw Javelins and 320s and other uh, HE assets in the vehicles. Yeah. And we have. Uh, two dismounts in the back seats that, you know, they're kind of general purpose dudes. They can hop out and, you know, you can have rifles or other weapon systems uh, complacent and, like, next to the JLTVs. Yeah. So it's a very versatile section. And they have a lot of storage space in these JLTVs I've seen. Like, you can store, like, how many tow missiles can you guys usually fit in those things? Uh, six in the missile silo. That's pretty cool. But I've seen I've seen seven or eight. I'm sure, yeah. It's a, it's a game of Tetris. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's, it's definitely a lot better than than the way that Humvees were set up. We used to have these, like, missile racks in the rear of the Humvees that you could put, like, three, four, or five, depending on, I mean, if you're stacking them and actually, like, strapping them down and stuff. Right. Um, but they have actually built-in spots, which I think is great, because then you can actually, like, set up a Vic to be, hey, this is definitely a Saber Vic. Like, that's what it is for. Yep. You know? Um, backtracking real quick, what are the what kind of weapon systems do you guys, like, usually deal with in the 0352 piece of infantry training battalion like what weapon systems did you guys get hands on with the most while you're there uh our primary weapon system is the m240 bravo because okay. that's the uh machine gun that is mounted up there with you in the saber because yeah. you know you're not shooting a saber at somebody standing on the ground yeah uh get real familiar with that and then our anti-armor weapons are the m41 alpha 7 the saber system yeah and then the m98 alpha 2 the javelin so the saber system that's a that's that's an interesting big boy. That's still considered a heavy anti-armor yep. weapon, correct? Because yep. it reaches uh, out to a certain distance. Yeah. That's why it's referred to heavy, is heavy because of the tell, distance, yeah. not because of like the explosive capabilities, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. But now, I know at the time when I was still in, they had like, or when I was still in the infantry, they had like some like tow two bravos that could reach out to like forty two hundred meters. And this is all stuff that's on Google and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, I've also heard that they've been working with like radio frequency. We stuff. uh the last missile shoot we actually did, we got some of those. You uh, did? Yeah, it's it's got a super long designator. It's the uh uh the BTM TAC three F uh RF missile, the radio frequency missile. Okay. Um there's not a whole lot of set information. They're still doing a lot of testing on it. Yeah. We've heard what we've been told is sixty seven hundred meters max. Jeez. Max. Yeah, that's, so you know, you pair that with the ninety-six times uh, zoom on the saber system on the Taz. Yeah, you're you got a hell of a weapon there. Yeah, yeah, and plus you can get your ten-digit grids and stuff like that, so you yep. can figure out how far everything is. Yeah, that's um, significantly better than what the tow two Bravos, even the arrows were. You know, I mean, most of the tow missiles that you see everywhere, are like shooting at 37, 37 50 max, is mm -hmm. like the typical, you know wire guided missile right but yep. and then you don't have to worry about that wire sag yeah um, that's another piece you don't have to worry about that and i'm sure that there obviously there's going to be kinks they have to work out i know that like issues with um just malfunctions with the missile while they're in flight and things of that nature we've had we've signals. had a couple erratic missiles yeah ourselves, yeah because that was one issue you had with the wires is like say a signal didn't make it to the missile in time and it 
stop it wasn't correcting when you were trying to correct it with a traversing unit or whatever yep. um that you would have issues with that but i imagine that the you know any any new system is going to have kinks you got to work out but that's cool that they're at least starting to bring them to the surface i'm sure that there's all kinds of improvements and and changes that will happen as they're you know kind of smoothing out the uh the manufacture of these things for for use in combat but um so that you got that that's the saber system that, yep. that's what fires tow missiles the two blocks optically tracked wire to command link guide is yes, that's so calm right oh yeah um now the other weapon system javelin right yep all right what's the that's considered a medium anti-armor weapon yep. still correct now i know at the time now i've seen some weird stuff on on the internet especially with russia ukraine and stuff like that where guys are taking jab shots top like top attack to jab shots that are far past 2500 meters which is what we were taught in school yep. hey 25 me 2500 meters is the max effective range for the javelin missile but there's been people that have been shooting past that limited usually the 2500 meters is limited because of the clue because of the optic um okay. when you get into that seeker dome you only have a nine times oh yeah yeah yeah. And it's very pixelated so past 2500 you're not seeing a ton yeah um i know the army and there might be some of the new units in ukraine uh there's a new clue um it's almost like handheld it looks like a i don't know like a little game boy or something yeah um and yeah i've heard the max effective of that is you don't have to say 4, like thousand plus or yeah 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 four thousand yeah well yeah i'm sure that there's a lot of other pieces that are upgraded about it Yep. like various things i'm sure like with new technology there's always going to be like little upgrades here and there uh like drone technology has been in improving slowly but surely but um the javelin is is the that is probably i would say arguably one of the most Im most effective anti-armor weapons that we have in our arsenal 100 uh, percent, 98 percent hit rate yeah, yeah. i mean it's, it's like hard to miss it's hard to miss and they are so versatile mm -hmm. for like what you can do because you have two different attack modes, right? Top and direct. Yep. Top and direct. Now, what's the minimum? Do you remember what the minimum of the minimum arming distance for direct attack was? Sixty-five meters. Sixty-five. What? What about top attack? Uh, one hundred and fifty. That's all Googleable information, anyway, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, now, that's the cool thing about it is you can choose based on the scenario and based on what's going on, grant like on the ground, like hey. I got a tank or an armored vehicle that's under a bridge. Obviously, yeah. I can't shoot top attack, or it's in a barn or something like that. Can't shoot top attack because it's going to hit the roof, right? Mm -hmm. But hey, I can shoot direct attack, you know. And you can just kind of find a spot that you can like nestle into to fire it, as long as you have the clearance behind your yeah. back blast is clear and all that stuff. Do you remember the back blast? Uh, the back blast for firing within a room for those? Uh, yeah, fifteen meters by twelve meters by seven. Okay. Yep. See, I can't even remember and that. that kind of yeah, stuff. the uh, so long. the room has to have twenty square feet of ventilation because all the fumes and gases. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been seeing a lot. I'm sure you've probably seen it too. Like all these guys firing jabs from inside of buildings and stuff too. Like because obviously you want to be in some sort of defilade, um, or at least inside of some cover and concealment. Yep. You know. Um, and I've seen some of these videos where like they didn't get quite enough back blast clearance and yep. like they're cooked. Yeah, they're cooking themselves yep. inside there because they did they made they made poor decisions or whatever. Um, yeah, so the javelin, that's super, super versatile. I love that, that weapon system. I never got to fire one because they were like, they're so much more expensive than firing toes. Yep. Um, no, I got a, I've got one of them under my belt. I shot it at ITB, at infantry training. Before. At ITB? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, usually like the top one or two dudes that graduate from the class get to shoot either a jab or a saber. A that's toe. cool. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how they did it with us too. Um, uh, so let me ask you, let's go on to this. So, uh, what's. What was day to day life for you like uh, when you were a vehicle commander? I know it's probably a little different now being a jab gunner, but mm -hmm. what was it like as a vehicle vehicle commander? Um, having your own dudes, especially like being that close when you're sitting in a vehicle with them for you know a week plus, you get pretty tight with them. Yeah. Uh, day to day, we'd usually wake up, do like a truck PT. Um, you would take your respective truck and go PT with them, or we'd do sections. Um, then we would usually head over to the armory, do weapons maintenance, weapons yeah. familiarization. Uh, a lot of the times doing gun drills, practicing mounting and dismounting the weapons from the vehicles. Oh, yeah. Because um, that takes time. People don't realize it's a pain in the ass. 
if you don't practice that stuff on a regular basis. Lugging a seventy six pound mark up a up a JLTV, it ain't it ain't fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, it's, it can be. Trying. And then uh, we would do a lot of TDGs because okay. with our um, with our vehicle capability being on wheels, we can do so many mission sets. Yeah, tactical um, decision game is what TG, TDG stands for. By the way, for for those of you who don't know, which is it's an effective way of basically like. A war game. Yeah, it's like war gaming. Yeah. Like, hey, here's a scenario. Uh, figure a way out to solve this problem. You yeah. know, which is great, especially for for new guys coming up who don't like who haven't had a lot of opportunity to be in like leadership positions. They can kind of think through problems and figure out ways that they can solve that problem. Because once you get out there and you're faced with all these different options, mm-hmm. it's up to you. It's not like, hey, you can't just be like, hey, boss, what do I need to do? Like, you need to know what to do. You know, so that's yeah. awesome. And you guys have like a like a sand table or anything like that in the barracks? We or? do. We got a uh, terrain model out there, and then sometimes we'll just draw them up on the whiteboard. That's cool. Throw them up on the TV back there. Cool. Um, but, yeah, we we do stress that heavy. I mean, we do TDGs and have dudes writing five-paragraph orders down to the PFCs. That's good. Yeah. We, yeah, it's it's so important, and it's such a big part of our culture, making sure everyone to the lowest level knows what's going on. Yeah, that's yeah. that's hugely important. Like, you should be able to ask the PFC, hey, what's the mission? Yep. What Like, what's your mission? You know what you're doing. Those those are the guys executing. Those are the yeah. guys behind the weapons, pulling the triggers, making decisions. Yeah, they need and to they know they what's going on. A lot. Yeah. yeah, they so. got to know what's going on. The communication is probably the communication is one of the biggest friction points for any anything because if you can't communicate or you don't know what's going on or or like because like once 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 you cross that line of departure and things start getting loud and like. You start getting like environmental factors affecting you. Yep. Like you got to know what the plan is, mm-hmm. you know, which is what essentially a five paragraph order is for. It's like, what's the plan? That's right. You know? And uh, yeah, that's huge, man. Communication. So that's good. I'm glad to hear that you guys are like really stressing that communication piece and like making sure everyone down to the lowest level knows what's going on and understands the planning process. So that way they can, once they take your place or once they take the the next vehicle commander's place, they can you know, effectively lead Marines into battle ultimately, which is like the whole point of the infantry, you know, um, that's awesome. Okay. So that was when, it, when you were a vehicle commander, that was kind of some of the stuff you guys were doing, right? Yep. Day to day. What about, uh, being a JAV team gunner? What do you guys do? Day uh, day ja- day? doing JAV battle drills, um, focusing on really mastering that weapon system. And what that. is a JAV battle drill? Uh, you throw your, your whole kit on your flak and everything. And, uh, you know, you're carrying your MSR, the javelin missile with the clue. Okay. Um, and you know, we'll set out and do a little patrol. What does MSR stand for? Um, a missile simulated round. That's okay. like our, our training round, what we use. This is like a, uh, empty round that's filled with concrete basically. Uh, yep. Yep. Looks like a jab <laughs> filled with concrete. Here's a concrete, uh, missile. Carry this. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you said I'll do a little patrol and uh, hypothetically, you know, contact left or we'll come up on an anti-armor weapon system and we can sit there and choose a hide site um, and practice, you know, effectively destroying the enemy, the tank or whatever it is. Nice. OK. Um, now, uh, let's see. Have you been to your advanced school? I have not. You've not. No, you have... I'm slated to go in January. OK. For deployment. Have you heard what the advanced school for anti-tank missile men are, are like right now? It is. Uh, it's a lot of dismounted. They do, I think, one week of field ops. In no three XX stuff. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of living in the tree line and the wood line because that's that's really the mo. That's that's the consensus of what we've seen of warfare now. Yeah. Um, you know, in Ukraine, like there's trenches. Um, really, we don't have that many near peer threats besides Russia, China, Korea that are mobilized like us. So it's it's a lot of uh, dismounted operations. Yeah, well, you see a lot of this. You see how effective it is because, like, you're you're leaving such a big footprint when you got an armored vehicle, yep. you know, or driving down the road. Like, if you've got, like, the enemy's got a dismounted anti-tank team, like, and they're in the tree line, you're not going to see them inside your... Well, I, I, I look vehicle. at us and I see what we can do with a javelin. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, in, in a real good hide site, it's so easy to destroy a convoy. Yeah. Now, do you guys practice making hide sites as jav teams? 100%. Yep. Do you? See, that's not something we ever did. I, I wish we had. That's a great. That's a great opportunity to like practice covering concealment. And we do. Uh, that. We do a lot of defilade with the Mark 19s too. Oh, defilade yeah. fire. Yep, that's awesome. Uh, Lance Corporal Sims there. He he just graduated the uh, advanced machine gunners course. Oh, that's yeah. That'd be that'd be a cool piece. He's a defilade guru. 
Yeah, there's a yeah. I mean, you see all the videos about guys firing a Mark 19 at like you know a Even 90 high, degree the high right angle there, and like yeah. they're just like firing using it as an indirect fire weapon, which is super cool because that's another versatile piece of equipment that we you know people don't really talk about a lot because they don't. I mean, unless they've like had hands on. Um, but it is like being being in a weapons platoon with all of these different weapon systems. Yeah, yeah, you can use them for their intended purpose, anti armor, um, machine gun fire, whatever, but. You have to look at them for what else they can do and their capabilities. Like you said, with the saber system, yeah, um, we have a couple trained dudes as FOs that can coordinate with mortars, and we can use that saber and that far target location to call for fire. Yeah, well, and then you can use like you you can use the saber to get ten digit grids for yep. people too. Yep. You know, so that is huge. That's huge. Nobody else has that capability That's except right. for cat. Yep. Uh, all of our thermal optics on our machine guns. You can use them to scan. Um, so there's so much, so many more purposes for our weapon systems than just that. And sometimes we'll come up here and sit down and just brainstorm. Yeah, you know the worm, the worm, uh, worm formula? formula. Yeah, you yeah. can use that with some of these optics too. You know, right. because you could just use the steady lines. With passive range finding. Yeah, passive range finding, and there's just, I mean, and really, you know, at the end of the day, you're just walking, r walking rounds on target, you know, a lot of the time, you know, especially if you're in a, like a legitimate combat scenario. So mm -hmm. yeah, cats, cats got a lot of versatility to them. And that's, that's why I think that they're such a valuable battalion asset. Oh yeah. You know, uh, and really 52s only exist in two places in the Marine Corps from what I understand, unless it's changed. And that's in LAR. And in cat, yep. right? There's no 52s in the line line companies right we, now. We right? uh, we just recently, I don't know, one eight does it for their deployments. I don't know if it's Marine Corps wide, but we do push out some JAV teams to the, to attach to the line companies. Yep. Okay, but not not to like stay there permanently, like, just to like augment them, kind of like right. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. It's kind of like when we would push snipers out to attach to different companies, yeah, like have to, 60s and yeah, all gunners. Yeah. Yeah, and you might have like an players. FO or something like like an actual. Uh, an actual JFO right. that from the snipers that would go out and they could like help with call for fire with 60s or whatever it is, you know. Yep. Um, yeah, that's cool. Now, uh, so how many people are in your JAV team with you? Usually two to three. Um, you have the JAV gunner, then you have the A gunner. He can also act as the team leader. Okay. Um, and then you'll usually have one, every anywhere from one to three dudes for security. Okay, how many how many JAV teams do you guys have? In Cat Light, in my platoon, we have two, sometimes three. Um, two sometimes. Our our TO is set like per vehicle, but depending again on our mission set, um, the weapon systems and the loadouts can change a snap of a finger. Okay. Um, it always depends what we're rolling with, based yeah. on what we need to do. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now I know that you guys have. When you're here in the rear in garrison, like you guys can do the TDGs, you guys do the sand table exercises, do like, you know, rehearsals of concept on terrain models. Uh, you can go to the armory, do weapons familiarization. You can do yep. gun drills. You can do, you know, assembly and disassembly of mounting and dismounting vehicles with the weapon systems and things like that. What's what's life like for you guys when you go to the field? Like as cat, do you that's, guys, that's does it vary on depending on what like, what field op it is like it some, is. do you guys always take trucks do you do you sometimes take trucks do you do dismounted sometimes how does that work usually yep um cats always gonna roll with jltvs that's okay we have that capability and we own the truck so that's i mean at least how we're gonna transpill out there yeah yeah uh we will do certain days dismounted because it's we're, we're a infantry marine you yeah. have good field craft but you will take the trucks with you every time because it helps take all your gear out there yeah, yeah, you logistically you don't have to like take buses or seven tons like everyone else does right okay um, but no, the field is, the field is where we get to practice our craft, where we get to have fun. Yeah. Um, we'll do a lot of the longer ranges because we have the heavy machine guns. You need those big ranges. Right. Um, we'll do a lot of bulldogging. We do like SR7, SR9. Um, bulldogging is where you, it's essentially just buddy rushing with, with mix. vehicles. Yep. Yeah. People don't understand that, Like a lot of people don't realize that you can buddy rush with vehicles. It's a universal concept. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's tried and true. It, will uh, you explain, explain what that's like when you're buddy rushing with or bulldogging with vehicles? What's that like? It's, it's difficult. Um, because one calm doesn't work half the time. So, you know, you're craning your neck, looking out of this little tiny window, yeah. uh, trying to see, you know, where's that Vic? Where's that one? Um, but you got you got your gunner up there. That yes, has, oh, that has a. That was what I was hoping you'd say. Gunners yeah. can communicate with the the VC, and we have um, 
call signs or uh, hand and arm signals that the gunners can use and pass to the other gunners. Perfect. When comms are down. That's um, good. You can also use pyro. Yeah, um, sure. Of course. Uh, other, other methods of communication. That's, but, man, people uh, don't understand, like, the gunners got to talk to each other. Like, I, if, if one gun goes down, the other one's got to pick up suppression for that's him. That's right. 100%. It, yeah. The most valuable position in that vehicle. Yeah. Um, super valuable. And now, do, do you guys cross train everybody so that everyone kind of knows how to do everyone else's yep. job? And anyone in CAT, uh, 31, 52, whatever, you can throw them on a weapon system. Damn. Awesome. They will know it. That's, see, we, that's, we take yeah. a lot of pride in that. That's, yeah, that's the way to do it. You know, there's, there's, uh, there is, um, you know, I think that that is such a valuable thing because, like, especially if you think about, like, in combat, say somebody gets hit, somebody becomes a casualty, and they're out of the fight temporarily, and they can't necessarily perform their duties and responsibilities. Like, the, the guy next to him needs to be able to do that, you yep. know? That's huge. That's huge. I'm glad that you guys do that stuff. So you, you use your vehicles a lot. You do a lot of mounted stuff in the field, but you also do – um, some dismounted stuff like javelin stuff. I imagine yep. some hunter killer stuff. Yeah, the uh, the cat heavy package that's mounted pretty much always. Um, and then the cat light, my platoon, and the UTVs. We okay. uh, we generally just use the UTVs as a method of transportation because you can't mount yeah. anything on there really. Yeah. Um. So you know we'll we'll drive the UTVs. Auto will compromise is like 500 meters. So we'll drive them like couple click or yeah, a couple clicks away from the objective, and you know we'll set an ORP, cami them up, yeah, stage them, and then. From there, it's dismounted anti armor. That's Those cool. Nice. It is, it is cool. Yeah, man. I'm. 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 Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that you guys are training the way that you are, and that people are still passing the knowledge down. Like, because a lot of this stuff is the same stuff that was passed down to me that that I talked about that people were telling me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's still effective things. It's still effective ways to train. It's still effective ways to communicate with people, and uh, it's valuable because. You know, we have all of these assets at our disposal that we can use for so many various like tasks, depending on what the mission is. And Cat is just so versatile, yeah. like so much more versatile than a lot of people. And in, and, and, you know, I was talking to some guys who went to Afghan as Cat. I never had the opportunity because I only did UDPs when I was in Cat, but the guys that I knew that went to Afghan as Cat. Those they, were uh, my seniors. Those are the dudes that trained us. Yeah, like they, they, well, some of them, they even had, they took weapons company and they became a fully dismounted company. They're just whiskey company, mm -hmm. you know? So like being able to do the cross training where you're doing dismounted stuff and mounted stuff is good because like you can do both. Because yep. like a lot of the line guys don't get an opportunity to do a lot of mounted operations. No, so not at all. so it's harder for them to adjust when it comes time to start doing that. You know, so I think that's super valuable. And and all the cross training and everybody like, you know, getting practice and getting reps at, at at understanding the planning process and the order process and like understanding how to war game and you know things like that. That's super valuable. That's yep. super valuable. So I, I, like it's awesome to see that you guys are still doing that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, look, I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to come out here and, and, uh, <gasps> with me for a little bit oh, here my and, pleasure. and fill people in on, on what it's like to be an O three fifty two, an anti-tank missile man, a tow gunner, a oh, jav yeah. gunner in the Marine Corps today in 2023. Um, and I'm sure that there's going to be guys that fired the dragon back in the seventies and eighties that are going to be able to relate to this stuff yep. too. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, this stuff. This stuff transcends generations, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so I, I, either way, I appreciate you uh, you taking the time out, come here and no, any any time I can. Um, I'm lucky enough to say I'm 20 years old and I can genuinely say I love what I do. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of you know college age kids that get to send millions of dollars of missiles down there. Yeah, that's sick, man. Um, like I can't. That was why I picked that job too, because yeah. I like I wanted to shoot missiles and machine guns. Yep. <laughs> so that's like. That's like that's like the dream, you know. If you're 18 years old and you played Call of Duty and you shot mi missiles and machine guns in that game, well, guess what? You can do it in real life. Yep. How cool does that sound? You know. <laughs> so. No, it's, um, it's a great gig. Cool, man. Well, yeah, I appreciate your time again, and uh, you know, best of luck. I know you guys got a lot of stuff going on in the future. You guys are a busy battalion, um, and we look forward to seeing seeing uh, what kind of things you guys do. Yes, sir. No, I appreciate you having me. It's been All a right. pleasure. Cool. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. You take care. Yeah, you too.